Today, I want to talk about the first human clinical trial of NMNH. I've released a video previously where I went into the preclinical data for NMNH and some of the relevant biochemistry. I also referenced that this trial was ongoing. I have linked to this video above for those who want to review it. I now have some results from the trial, so I will go through what they found. It was a 90-day human trial run by YouthEver under the YouthPeak brand. Upfront, I need to say that the results are not published and not peer-reviewed, but the company did provide a summary PDF. So in this video, we're going to do three things. First, I'll explain the details of the trial. Second, I'll translate the reported results into clinical meaning. And third, I'll be clear about what we still cannot conclude. Let's go through it carefully. Quick context review. NMNH is simply NMN in a reduced state, meaning it has gained extra electrons, which may help it to work differently in the body. In cell and animal studies, NMNH can raise NAD plus more potently than NMN. So that's interesting, but potency in a dish does not guarantee benefits in humans. So let's start with the trial design. This was a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled phase one trial. There were 80 healthy adult participants split evenly into four groups, a placebo group, 125 milligrams of NMNH, a 250 milligrams, and a 500 milligrams group. The trial lasted 90 days. The stated objectives were to assess safety and tolerability, to measure NAD plus levels in the blood, and to look at broader outcomes like quality of life, physical performance, and biological age. Importantly, these were healthy people Large effects are harder to achieve in healthy populations and also harder to interpret. Let's start with the strongest part of the data, NAD+. According to the summary, the 125 milligram dose increased NAD about one and a half times, the 250 milligram dose about 1.8 times, and the 500 milligram dose about three times. The placebo group showed no meaningful change. First, NMNH does raise NAD plus in humans, and second, the effect appears to be dose-dependent. That's encouraging. However, it is important to note that we are not shown absolute NAD plus values, individual variability, or direct comparisons to NMN under the same conditions. Beyond NAD plus levels, the summary also reported improvements in how participants felt day to day. Energy fatigue and emotional well-being. The summary reported improvements in energy fatigue of 14% for 125 milligrams, 34% for 250 milligrams, and 35% for 500 milligrams. Also, for emotional well-being, the improvements were 13%, 26%, and 31% for the same doses. So there did seem to be a plateau, or at least reduced dose dependency at the higher doses. How were these measured? According to the registered trial details, participants completed the SF36 quality of life questionnaire. The SF36 is a standard validated tool used widely in clinical research, of which two subscales matter here the vitality subscale, which captures energy and fatigue, and the mental health subscale, which captures emotional well-being. So these outcomes are not made up. They are legitimate, validated, self-reported measures. However, the interpretation could be tricky. First, these are subjective outcomes. Participants are reporting how they feel. Second, the results are reported as percentages. This is not how SF36 data are usually presented in scientific papers. Normally, we would want to see baseline scores, absolute point changes on the 0 to 100 scale, and clear comparisons showing the difference between the groups. Without that information, we can't 
judge clinical magnitude. For context, most NMN human trials show little to no change in SF36 vitality scores. Exercise interventions, on the other hand, often improve vitality by 10 to 20 points. If NMNH truly produced changes in that range in this population, that would indeed be notable. But without the raw data, we really can't confirm. The correct interpretation, therefore, is that the participants reported feeling better, more energetic, and with better emotional well-being, but the size and robustness of that effect remain uncertain. The summary also reported a reduction of biological age of five years. However, the method used to calculate biological age is not disclosed. We don't know if this was a DNA methylation clock, and if so, which one? A blood biomarker composite or a proprietary score? Biological age is not an agreed scientific metric, and without knowing the details of what they measured, I think there is little that we can draw from this. On safety, the data are reassuring. Over 90 days, there were no significant changes in liver markers, kidney markers, lipids, or urine analysis. That suggests NMNH is well tolerated in the short term in healthy adults. But remember, this was a small study and 90 days is quite short. So where does this leave us with NMNH? NMNH appears to raise NAD plus in humans. It appears well tolerated over 90 days and participants reported improvements in subjective energy and mood. But the results are unpublished, reported only by the sponsor and lack key details needed to judge clinical significance. This is interesting, early human data. Now it needs independent replication, full transparency, and longer trials. One final comment I would make is that while acknowledging the obvious conflict of interest, I applaud YouthPeak for running the trial. It is so far the only NMNH human trial that has been completed, and I really hope that they publish the results in a peer-reviewed journal. Thank you so much for your attention, and I will speak to you again soon.